What's up guys, welcome back to the Daily Stock Picks. And in this video, we'll be going over three entertainment stocks users and investors love and that you should consider buying right now, according to this article by Investors Place. So what I'll be doing here for you guys is reading over this article with my beautiful voice, commenting, and we'll be conducting my own quantitative analysis to see whether these three companies either belong in our dividend portfolio or our value portfolio by using this checklist. More on that later, but if you guys feel like being awesome, make sure that you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I would really appreciate it. And without a further ado, let's get this video started. So three entertainment stocks users and investors love. Several entertainment stocks are having a major moment right now by Divya Prem Kumar, Investor Place Contributor. I hope you guys really do appreciate it because I'm actually reading out this article for you guys and doing my own quantitative analysis so that you don't have to do it and you can just watch this video and get so much amount of value from it. Make sure that you stick around till the end of the video, guys. That's my humble request. So as we remain confined to the safety of our homes, for the foreseeable future, entertainment stocks are having a moment. Although the border entertainment sector, namely movie theaters, facing, faces challenges during the novel CVPD, companies that offer in-home entertainment services are seeing a heyday. From movies to video games and music, the pandemic has created a seismic shift in the entertainment industry. For example, streaming platforms once second in line to cinemas now control the rights to major motion pictures. Earlier this year, the highly anticipated movie Mulan, which is expected to generate over $1 billion at the box office, will go straight to streaming on Disney+. This gives the platform complete control of the movie, including revenue, data, and distribution. So this growth has spread to online games, music streaming platforms as well. With the digital revolution underway, it is wise to get behind the top entertainment stocks in this sector. Here are top three picks. So these are the three picks which we'll be reading over and we'll be conducting our own analysis to see whether these companies belong in which portfolio. So the first company in this list is Disney, ticker symbol DIS. Although its doors remain open, the novel CVPD economy crippled Disney's parks businesses as visitors rates are a fraction of the pre-pandemic days. While this left investors wary about the future prospects of the company, Disney's streaming platform, Disney Plus, proved to be its lifeboat in an hour of need. So I think the management did a really good job launching Disney Plus around a year back, I guess. And that would have offset some of the damage that the current CVPD scenario has caused. So the pandemic presented the company with a unique opportunity to take the emerging streaming platforms to the next level. Disney's plan paid off as subscriptions accelerated in the third quarter. Since then, the platform continued to add some big ticket names, include Hamilton that was set for the theater's release in October 2021 after purchasing the rights to the movie for $75 million. The show premiered on Disney Plus for its paid subscribers. It was downloaded 752,000 times three days after the release. Who we? That's a big number for the first three days. So Disney hopes to keep the momentum going. The much anticipated release of Mulan on Disney Plus is likely to spend, send the stock price soaring. And there's a talk of a new platform with the content from Disney subsidiary networks, including ABC, Fox Television, and Freeform. Disney reported earnings on August 3rd, and although revenue and earnings per share fell, Disney Plus ratings showed a glimmer of hope. Subscriptions rose from 54.5 million in May to 60.5 million subscriptions. Wow. This is on par with like Netflix subscriptions in the earlier days, I guess. But Disney is like a content warehouse. I know like Netflix has been like purchasing a lot of digital assets. As a result, its free cash flows have been falling. But dividend, like on Disney on the other side, it's a completely different animal. So although Disney stock may not seem an attractive investment at face value, the company's prosperous streaming platform makes it one of the entertainment 
stocks to consider. Disney Plus is capable of cap catapulting the stock to a new highs in the coming months and years. Okay, let's have a look at Disney stock. So for some reason, Disney is not giving us the price to earnings multiple. Let's have a look. Why is that? Disney. Yep. Since it doesn't have profit enough profitable earnings, that's why it's the price to earnings multiple is negative. All right, it's not applicable here but we can still see if the company does meet our dividend criteria. For this, I like to use Y charts so that I can get the data represented in a picture format rather than just looking at boring old numbers. Before we even go on to that, let me show you the dividend criteria that a company needs to meet if it wants to belong in our dividend portfolio. So my dividend portfolio principles are based on these three books. The first book is Dividend Still Don't Lie by Kelly Wright. They run a successful dividend platform called the Investment Quality Trends. I would highly recommend checking it out. The second book is Get Rich with Dividends by Mark Lichtenfeld. I hope I'm not pronouncing his word, like name wrong. And the third book is The Ultimate Dividend Playbook by Morningstar writer Josh Peters. So these are the four principles that a company needs to meet if it wants to belong in our dividend portfolio. So the rule number one is that the current free cash flows must be positive. So free cash flows is the amount of money that the company actually gets after paying out its capital expenditures. So if you wanna be sleeping well at night, we wanna be making sure that we're investing in really good, wonderful businesses. And the rule number two is that the dividends that or paid out should not be more than 75% of the free cash flows. So basically what it means that at least 25% of the free cash flows is retained within the company so that they can use it for other growth purposes and in order to grow the business. And rule number three is that it needs to have a consistent dividend growth history of at least five years. So it needs to be growing its dividend at least in the past five years and 10 years if you want to be on the more conservative side. But since I'm looking at all the other aspects in terms of its financial statements, that's why I do tend to go with five years if I see that the fundamentals of the companies are really strong. And rule number four is the buying criteria. So we only want to be investing in a dividend stock if the current dividend yield is greater than or equal to the five year dividend yield average. We'll go more on that later. Now looking at Disney stock, we can see that the revenues have been increasing consistently, but because of the parks closing down and everything like that, it did have a huge hit on the free cash flows. So the cash flows is positive, but let's see how much the dividends that are being paid out. So the dividend that's currently being paid out is minus $2.895 billion, which is more than the amount of free cash flows that it has. So basically they might be getting this revenue or this dividend from its balance sheet, but I wouldn't be looking at this at this particular point in time because of its fundamentals and the amount of dividend that it's being paid out. As a result, since the company is currently bleeding money, I wouldn't be looking at the company either in our dividend portfolio or our value portfolio. Because whenever we're investing in stocks like these, we want to be making sure that 10 years from now, you should be okay with these stocks and it should have given you a consistent return, right? without putting your principal at risk. So as a result, Disney does not meet our criteria. On with the next stock. The next company in this list is Spotify, ticker symbol SPOT. So music streaming saw a boost during the pandemic and the companies like Spotify benefited from the accelerator growth. Although revenue took a hit from large investments this past quarter, Further prospects of for this streaming service are very promising. Spotify business model remained resilient to the pandemic and the company's user base expanded in the last few months. 
As more people streamed content online, the company capitalized on this opportunity to support its future growth. Spotify inked a number of high-profile partnerships with podcast stars to create. Just an FYI, Joe Rogan's podcast has been moved to Spotify and it seems that they're paying around $100 million. I don't know the exact duration or the terms of service on when Joe Rogan has to stay with Spotify for. But that's a pretty substantial and captured like a lot of news because I regularly follow Joe Rogan's podcast on a regular occurrence. So these investments paid off as the streaming the music streaming giant reported $8 million net subscribers on its platform in the quarter ending in June. The numbers lifted analyst expectations and Mark Mahe of RBC Capital increased the stock price estimate from $320 to $330. Spotify sees its streaming service as a constant con conversion with its audience. Each feature added is done to increase engagement with its 300 million users. The company also is adding more original content to maintain the platform's exclusivity. This will help it attract new artists and new users. Spotify total addressable market is in the billions and the company is adding new users every single day with a number of new features and high profile deals with Michelle Obama and Kim Kardashian in the pipeline. Spotify is an entertainment stock that won't stop growing anytime soon. Okay, pretty bullish over here. Uh, looking at uh, what the uh, the writer is currently saying let's have a look at spotify spotify also doesn't have a positive earnings as a result it's not showing up as a price to earnings ratio multiple let's see if it meets our dividend criteria i would highly doubt it it does so since it doesn't pay out any dividends i wouldn't be looking at the stock but we can definitely consider it as a value proposition and in for in order for a particular company to meet our value portfolio it must meet these five rules the five rules or the five principles for my value portfolio is based on these three books the new buffettology by mary buffett and david clark i think mary buffett is the daughter-in-law for the world famous warren buffett the oracle of omaha the second book is rule number one investing by phil town a really good read and the third book is the little book that still beats the market by joel greenbutt where he goes over his magic formula a little bit cheesy but he gets the point across pretty well and the five principles are here as follows the value portfolio the rule number one is that the return on invested capital must be greater than or equal to 10. i put a style over here is because Generally, you do come across companies that have really good fundamentals that are not generating return on invested capitals more than 10. So I would be considering that them as well. But a general rule of thumb is looking for companies that, are pay, that have a return on invested capital of more than 10%, meaning that you're investing in pretty good blue chip stocks, right? And rule number two is that consistent net cash flows. So cash flows should be consistent. And the rule number three is that the balance sheet. So in the balance sheet, the long-term debt that the debt that the company owes to other third parties like banks, investors, uh, and like other people who they owe money to, it should be cleared off within six years or less. That's a rule of thumb that I follow. And rule number four and five are the buying criteria. So if you want to be buying this company only when the current price is less than the fair price, 80% of the fair price, we'll be using this, the intrinsic value calculation in the Google Sheets to find this out. More on that uh, within a few seconds. And rule number five, if rule number four isn't met, we can consider buying this company if the current price to earnings ratio is 50% lesser than the highest price to earnings ratio over the past five years. And it should be lesser than the cheaper than the broader S&P 500 index. Coming to this, let's have a look and see if Spotify meets our value portfolio. For this, what we'll be doing here is typing in Spotify in the ticker symbol. Now let's do the analysis. So the return on invested capital is minus 8.90. So that's a straight no for me because we want to be looking for companies that are able to generate profit for the owners, right? 
Um, but let's have a look at the other fundamentals here as well. So the revenue is $7.572 billion. The free cash flow is $490 million. That's pretty good conversion. The, it has no long-term debt. It has $2.546 billion as in uh, total current assets, which are the assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. And their earnings per share diluted is minus 3.186. Since the company, don't get me wrong, the company is pretty phenomenal as it's revolutionizing the podcast spectrum as well now because it's trying to enter into it. But it does need to have a little bit of more time in order to prove to us that it's worth in either in a dividend portfolio or our value portfolio. But based on the current numbers, I don't believe that it's a good fit for either one of these portfolios. Now, let's have a look at the third and final company, Activision Blizzard, ticker symbol ATVI. So entertainment stocks like Activision Blizzard have been on the wild ride since the start of the pandemic as more people took the to gaming during the lockdown. In 2020, it is estimated that 2.7 billion gamers will spend $159 billion on games, a number that is expected to reach a north of $200 billion by 2023. Activision Blizzard stock rallied and impressed with 39% this year, and experts believe this upward trend is likely to continue through the year. With the remote work environment, video games became a compelling pastime for an older demographic as well. This bolstered the demand for Activision Blizzard, online and PC games. During this second quarter, the company saw a 37.8% increase in its revenue to $1.93 billion and 76% increase in net income at $580 million. Cash flows for the year also increased by almost 500%. Wow. Okay, Activision Blizzard pays a dividend each year with a yield of about 0.5%. With strong revenue numbers and growing presents, Activision Blizzard is an entertainment stock that is expected to outperform the market this year. Given the current momentum of video games, we recommend you stay invested in the stock. Okay, so let's have a look. Ticker symbol ATVI, I believe. Let's look at the price to earnings ratio, 35.52, which is higher than the broader S&P 500 index. So it's not cheap. It is a little bit expensive, more on the expensive side. So they did say that the company does pay out a dividend. Okay. So the free cash flows are positive. So the cash flows haven't moved that much in the past 10 years, less than 10%. So nearly 0% growth over the past 10 years, if you were to look at the growth rates, or less than 5%. Activision Builder pays $283 million as a dividend. So let's see how much of this is being covered. 283 divided by 1.715. So around just around 16% of the free cash flows is being paid out as dividend. And in order for us to belong in our dividend portfolio, it needs to be paying out dividend at least five years or growing its dividends over the past five years. Activision Blizzard. Oh, we oui. so Activision Blizzard has been paying out dividends at a rate of 10 years. It's been increasing its dividends from 2011 or so at a rate of 13.09%. So imagine you getting going to work working and without doing anything you're able to get a 13 percent increase on your salary year over year just by working in that company take that similar take by just act investing in the company called activision blizzard right so it's pretty good the free cash flows are positive this also meets the criteria now it has been paying out dividends consistently now let's have a look to see whether the company is a buy right now at its current valuation. So Activision Blizzard, ATVI. So the current dividend yield is 0.49%. <coughs> Sorry guys. And we want to be buying this company when the average yield, when it is more than that average yield, right? So the act Activision average yield is 0.60%, which is not that well. 
and uh, which is lesser than the current dividend yield of 0.49%, which is a little bit sad because we do know that it could have been like a really good opportunity for us to invest in because the fundamentals have been strong. But based on the dividend yield portfolio theory, I wouldn't be investing in this company because it does seem to be on the expensive side a little bit. So let's see when this criteria was met just for like the fun sake, right? On July 19th of 2019, this was trading around 0 0.82. Just for fun, let's see how the valuation would have spanned up. July of 20, around $46, right? And if you had invested in the company one year ago, approximately one year ago, your money would have nearly doubled right now. But the rest is short. I think we just missed the chance right now, but we should definitely be able to consider this uh, to see if it meets our value portfolio. All right, let's have a look at the value portfolio criteria. ATVI. The return on investor capital, pretty strong. And one, most of the years it's above 10%. And it currently has 10.18% as a return on investor capital. And the revenues have been increasing consistently and the free cash flows, we've already analyzed this. So return on investor capital, yes, net cash flows. Now let's see if it has a strong balance sheet. So it has a total of long-term debt of around $3 billion and a current assets of $7.719 billion. If the management chooses to do so, it can pay out the total long-term debt instantly, in a, immediately if it chooses to do so in a snap of a finger. So the strong balance sheet, definitely. And the price should be, now let's try to find the intrinsic value of the company right now, right? So we can see that the earnings per share is $2.34. ATVI. Okay, 17.07, 217.28. Woo! That's a lot. And now let's have a look at Activision Blizzard analyst estimates so that we can come at a growth rate properly. So they're expecting that the company is gonna grow around 24%, which is pretty good. So now the multiplication ratio would be 48.82, the minimum of these two. So according to our intrinsic value calculation, 10 years from now, the company would be worth somewhere around $815.66 if it tends to grow at this particular rate. And the fair price, at which we should be buying the stock is $231.86. And if we discount it to with a margin of safety of a 50%, the company that we should be buying it as $115.93. And the current price of Activision Blizzard is $83.21, which is a definite buy. I'm so happy that we were able to find the stock at the right time. Even though it does not meet our dividend portfolio, we should definitely consider this as a part of our value investment portfolio based upon the growth and the amount of capital appreciation that it can provide for the investors here. So definitely a value portfolio by using rule number four and five. The reason being is that it does not meet it is definitely lesser than the 50% of the highest price to earnings ratio over the past five years. So I would just say definitely a stage four, like stage four in the sense like the fourth rule has definitely been met. Okay, so looking at this, I do want to be looking at the other prospects as well. So in the past five years, the company has grown around 11.89. I'm sure that if it does grow at 24.41% as we estimated in our in our calculations, the price earnings multiple will be more than this and it will generally be beneficial for us because it will be increasing the intrinsic value, right? And now coming to the closing words. So Divya Prem Kumar has a financial degree from the University of Houston, Texas. She's a financial writer and an analyst. 
who has written stories on various financial topics from investing to personal finance. Divya has been writing for Investor Place since 2020. As of this writing, Divya Prem Kumar did not own any of these aforementioned stocks. So generally the writers, they do, it's a good practice to disclose what they own and what they don't own as per the stock recommendations. But coming to this, what I would say is that out of all of these three stocks, though Activision Blizzard does pay out a dividend, it's not the right time to buy the company at the moment. But definitely, if you were to look at Activision Blizzard, you should be considering it as a part of your value portfolio because it is trading less than 50% of its fair price. So it's offering you, so you're basically able to buy this company for when it's like worth a dollar, you're able to buy it for 50 cents. So it's a definitely buy. So make sure that you check it out, do your own due diligence and uh, invest in this company. It's highly recommended, I would say. And full disclosure guys, this video is for your education and entertainment purposes only. There is no guarantee that you will earn any money using the techniques and ideas mentioned in this video. This is not financial advice. Please do consult your financial or tax professional prior to making an investment in these companies. So I really appreciate you guys who have stuck around till the end of the video because you got a goodie at the end act by the Activision Blizzard stock which is a definite buy at the moment, right? And if you guys feel like being awesome, make sure that you do click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon so that you can get notified as soon as we post new videos and catch you in the next video. Peace.